Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. Yes, there are shadows. It is 6.05 Central Standard Time on January the 19th. <laughs> the 19th. Ooh. Okay, so I've come mid-project. And what I'm doing is I'm making myself a new uh, watercolor book a Coptic watercolor book because I've already finished one and I'm about to finish my Strathmore Tantone um, book so I'm going to need another one to work in and why should I go out and buy a book when I have 13 pads of cans and watercolor paper that I can use up and there's another reason I have joined a group of friends and we're calling ourselves the No Buy Buddies of 2021 because this year, we are not buying art supplies unless, unless, well, let me read you the rules. You know, I, I'm so neat. <laughs> says, no new stuff, number one. Only buy items to finish a project or a staple item you use on a regular basis, i.e. glue, paper, pens. You know, the stuff you run out of that you need to replace because you use them constantly. No gifting to each other, even at Christmas. So if we want presents, we can't go to Amazon to the wish list, which I updated last year. Um, we cannot go there to pick gifts for one another. <laughs> Darn it. So it might have to be um, just a lovely card and then gifting them something on the 1st of January of 2022. Just a thought. Um, the lending library is open. We can share or borrow supplies or items from each other, which means we're not spending money on anything except for an envelope and postage. Confession is good for the soul. You confess buying um, outside the rules. Like if you purchase something you know you're not supposed to purchase, you need to tell the rest of the group about it. Oh, let's see who breaks first. I won't say who all's in the group because I don't want to out anybody, but I will say... There's a couple people I'm feeling a little shaky about, and one of them is not me. Although I did have a weak moment yesterday. Anyway, but I didn't buy anything. All right, so I made myself one of these uh, traveler's journals out of a Eileen Hall, um, Sizzix die, a big, big Sizzix die, big XL, and use my scrapbook paper. I did have to order. Well, I know not. this is not the order stuff. I took apart one of Shannon Green's um, traveler thingies. You know, maybe it was an A5. Anyway, I took apart something so I could use the elastic till I could order elastic that will fit this. All right, so in here, what I've done is, where is it? There it is. I have written down what I've run out of since the 1st of January. Um, I'm out completely of Fabri-Tac. I'm out of one quarter H, one quarter eighth inch red sticky tape, two bottles of Tombow glue. I killed, <laughs> I killed one of my um, stamp pads. I think it's Memento XL or Memento Lux, whatever it was. Killed my summer Kentucky stamp pad, which I told um, a couple people about, and they said, "Oh, go and completely wash it out." and get it completely clean and start over. So I haven't done that yet because I forgot it, this was in here, but I'm gonna try it. Um, I've thrown away four pens. <laughs> and I threw away one black Posca pen and it's not the one that um, made the blob on something I shared on, um, on Instagram. It was a different one that actually was bone dry. I did use it to the last breath of life out of it. Um, and I'm fixing to run out of this stuff. Okay, so there's what I there's my confession for January so far. <laughs> I haven't bought anything that I'm not supposed to buy. I did have to order new blades for this because I'm I was on the last. You can break these off. I was on the last three things of the last blade, so I did order new blades for this because I use this thing nearly every day. All right, so I did order that, and I did order some Mod Podge dimensional stuff to work on a project with because I had my other stuff dried up. It was no good. There was so little in it, it just wasn't usable, so I did have to order some more of this. All right, uh, oh, that's it. Okay, so 
because we can't buy new stuff, I'm trying to make things. So I took jelly prints and used this tape and put it on both sides of jelly prints that I made. And here's the other one. So I will, uh, as much as I love gluing, I am digging this tape. Anyway, so I did that one. Where's the other one? I'm losing my mind. I know I had it here a minute ago. <laughs> it had the tape on it. And it was, oh, here it is. So I cut, actually I took a 9 by 12 um, tablet of Canson watercolor paper. The This stuff right here. Another one that I had some sheets left in. This is the 140 pound watercolor paper. And there's a smooth side and then there is a textured side. So I folded it so the smooth side was on the outside. I did six signatures. Six signatures and each one of the signatures has two pieces of the Canson paper in it. And I will do the Coptic stitch because I need more practice. And then I took the back part of this, you know, this part, well, that's not there. <laughs> I took the back part off of this one so I could use it for the back part of the new book. Because when I cut the first time, it wasn't the right measurements. <laughs> measure twice, cut once. I like cut twice, twice and measure 50 times. All right. Um, so I did this and then I took the Sukwang tape which was this stuff I think is either two or two and a half inches wide and there's the the front and the back done with it I did one full strip here one full strip this was three quarters of a strip so then I flipped it over and I used the leftover strip from the other side on this side and then the two so that's it all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my pokey tool oh yeah and I got I got to replace a pokey tool because I snapped the end of it off trying to clean out the Sizzix, big Sizzix die where the little where there were little holes poked in it and you know that stuff collects in those little holes and I snapped off the end of my where is it? Did I throw it away? <gasps> oh I might have thrown it away. My little red awl that I really liked but now I guess it's gone bye bye. Okay. So there's that and then I um just you know random prints and I really could care less if they're straight on here or not because honestly this doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to run my bone folder over this to make sure it has stuck to the stuff. Then I'm going to take my lethal weapon <laughs> and I'm going to cut right along here. And get this off. Frankly, I don't care if you can see the brown or the whatever color, like, you know, the ends here. Whatever color. I, I really could care less about that. This is just for me. I'm not trying to impress anybody with my skills. I'm just making myself a book to do watercolor stuff in. And then this last piece. Whoops, let's not get carried away there, girly. Man, what a nice blade that is when it's sharp. Okay, and I have a friend who collects strips. So what I will do is, I, I've been setting them aside for her. My jelly prints, she doesn't want scrapbooks, so I, did, I, I save all my jelly prints that I cut. I cut the white part off, I shove them all in an envelope, and I mail them to her, and she gets all giddy and makes wonderful stuff out of them. And, Otherwise, I think I might throw them away because I think this year I'm going to start throwing stuff away. I just have so much stuff that I cannot, I just can't, I can't keep track of it anymore. All right, so this side, let's do it on here. Pokey tool. This is a pokey tool from Stampin' Up. And you know what's amazing? I still have the cover that goes on it. <laughs> All right. Let me take this off of here. And just plunk her down. Let me cover this thing up so I don't lose the cover. There you go. I'll 
take this lovely tool. Whoops. And same thing all over again. I'm just going to cut the paper. Oh my gosh, I like this so much better than glue. It's not messy. It's easy. And it's so convenient. So when you have leftover pieces, what I do is when I have a large piece and I have little tiny leftover pieces, I save one of the backings and then I put the other stuff on top of it. And I put this in the drawer on top of here in the drawer so I know that these are extra pieces. So if I need a little piece to go underneath homemade washi or anything else to fill in, you know, a very small gap, I have extra pieces right here. I'm not wasting any of this stuff. I'm going to pull this off. Bum, 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 bum. And then I can stamp on these. I can do whatever I want. Where's the other one? <laughs> That's just sitting right here on the desk. And I think this is my front. And this is my back. So there they are. There's my front and my back to my book. Here are my pages. And I left a little lip on the inside here. And then I will sew that and make it a Coptic stitch book. I will come back and, oops, I will come back and sew. I won't talk through the sewing because <laughs> I might be swearing. So we need to mute that part. Sometimes it gets a little hairy. So I will sew this together and then I'll put a something on it. I'll embellish it in some way, I guess. No, not really. I'll just put an A bar on here for whatever it is. <laughs> and then um, I will use it, start using it. So I'm very excited about making my own book. I didn't buy anything. It's stuff out of my own supplies that I'm using up that I have. So I'll be back and I'll fast forward through the Coptic part.
Okay, so I decided not to use the punch because when I did it, <laughs> it scared the it scared the life out of the puppy. So it's easier to use this than it is to use the punch, especially on chipboard that's this thick. So I put it on the half inch. I've got my stuff marked, so it's kind of hard to see doing it this way, but I'm trying to align it with the lines that I drew for the holes, put the back end of the punch the same place next to the hole. And I'll go to town. Okay, for those of you who are, are looking at this going, why didn't she use this? I tried and it does not smash it down good enough for me. So I'm using this and this. Okay, so I screwed up and I put the gold in instead of the silver like I was going to. <laughs> All right, so... The, I put these underneath so that the metal wouldn't damage the book. And now I've decided that, I, like I did the others, I'm going to put it on top too. So now it doesn't damage any of the rest of the paper. It may not be attractive, but it does serve a purpose. You can paint them. You can put Posca pin over them. You do whatever you want. But there's some sharp edges on here, and I don't want that to rub onto my watercolor paper. I'm sh okay, so I'm back for how I poke holes in my Coptic stitch book. My husband made me a book cradle. Just your basic, like, you know, scrap wood stuff. And then it clips over one end, unfolds, goes on the other end and slips into the slots. And then you have, um, tape in the middle and, and the reason you have tape in the middle is because you can collapse this and fold it up and it just I store it like this up in a cart so there's like nothing to this so um, I'm going to poke holes in this it's it's really terribly boring so I'm going to fast forward through it but I thought oh, I thought you might like to see what it is that I use I think I put this in a video in the past but I'm going to go ahead and poke holes in this, in all the signatures. They're all marked. And then I will be back to do the sewing. Okay, so I'm here with the last portion of the Coptic Stitch watercolor book for myself. And I'm looking at how I lined my stuff up and it's not quite even. <laughs> Actually, it's really not even. I did better on the front than I did on the back. Although, I'm looking at the front and... Anyway. Um, so, I marked... Where the hole, these is where the holes are punched. Actually, these are the pencil marks, and then the holes are punched inside the pencil marks. So, 
I'm using a big eyed needle and then I'm using this <laughs> hemp cord, colored hemp cord. I can't tell you the brand because in order to get it in my storage system in my IKEA thing, I cut the top off. I think I bought this. I'm thinking I bought this several years ago and I got it at Michael's or uh, Hobby Lobby, one of the two. Because those are basically the only two art places where I live. I don't think I ordered this over the internet. I think I did actually physically go in the store. It may be AC Moore, so this may be more than four or five years old. AC Moore, I know, had a nice selection of this stuff. And I may have gotten it there. I just can't remember. It's been too long. Okay, so there's that with no name. I can't tell you. <laughs> this is a regular, uh, this is a big-eyed sewing needle. And there's all my cord. I may have to do a second stringing of it. All right, so let me get started. Okay, I'm down to the last part where I'm going to tie the knot, and I will be finished. Oh, 
All right, there was not one Coptic book finished. Now, some of these, when I was threading the needle through, I picked some of these up with the needle when I was going through gouging. So if you're gonna use these, you might wanna glue them down. There we go. It opens pretty much flat, and Ed, the more you use it, the flatter it'll get. So there we are, my next watercolor book. Dun, da, da, dun. Oh. All right, I see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, wait, let me mention one more thing. If you really want to see a, a, a very nice, neat, unstressful way to do it, do go to see Lemon's tutorial. I will put the link down below. Her tutorial on how to do this is one of the best tutorials I've seen. I've watched a lot of them, but I think hers seems to be the best tutorial. And she does hers a little different. She lays hers on the table and opens and pulls through and stuff. I hold it up like this instead of laying it on the table. It's the only difference. The outcome is still the same. You still have the stitching on the ends and you get a finished product. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.